Today, as we continue on with our biome ecosystem series, we're going to be talking about greenhouse ecosystems and the who, what, when, where, why, and how they can help us grow plants. Let's get started. When you're looking at bio ecosystems, it's really important to understand the nature of the ecosystem that we're trying to study, not only the altitude, the precipitation, the latitude, longitude, all of this information combined can help us to get information about the individual geographic area. So that way when we're trying to replicate the ecosystem that these plants that he have evolved in, we can best help provide those parameters and by providing those specific parameters it will give us a general idea of the type of system that that plant will need. When you're looking at different ecosystems there tends to be a little bit of a pyramid where there are different ecosystems that help to feed into others based on not only the altitude but also in particular the amount of precipitation and the heat that is provided for this and as you increase in dryness and temperature you're going to scale more towards a desert environment the more you increase in heat and temperature you're going to go towards a tropical system. When looking at greenhouse systems though, it tends to create a very unique environment in the fact that it is entirely man-made. Despite it is man-made though, it tends to be a little bit more towards a tropical system in high humidity, high temperature. However, the parameters of the greenhouse in which you're trying to repli replicate are going to be similar to that in which it is located and these can be easily built anywhere in the world and that's one of the great things about greenhouses is how mobile and modular they are they can be built anything from a cold frame using PVC pipes and 2x4 wood to hold up a polyfilm plastic material covering that that is entirely dependent upon the outside temperatures and ecosystem in which it is built in to the fully formed place where there's metal framing polycarbonate and that it is fully heated and there is no dependent whatsoever on the outside it can be completely manipulated on what you want it to be when you're looking at the average temperatures of a greenhouse, they can be in a desert environment or they can be in a heated environment. Most often the cases though, they are going to be built so that you can grow plants year round. And so the average temperatures in which the greenhouse is, is not going to be as dependent. Like mentioned earlier, based on where the greenhouse is built, they tend to range between five and 10 degrees of that outside temperature, unless they are heated. Now, when you are in, that is if the greenhouse is open. If the greenhouse is fully enclosed, just in the polycarbonate, it can vary as much as 20, 30, 40 degrees, especially when you're looking at the summer temperatures where it will trap in a lot of those greenhouse gases with little air exchange. It can easily raise temperatures up and above 140 degrees or 140 degrees if there's not adequate airflow and that's why the temperature of controlling is so important and often it is the case they're controlled by either a fan system or some portion of opening up the windows to allow a cross breeze in some other types of systems when you look at the precipitation most often they're going to be fully enclosed whether as mentioned before like this system it is polycarbonate or it could simply be completely man-made when you're doing that though a lot of these systems are going to need to be artificially water unless the tops of these are going to be opened up how you can do that is by either providing 55 gallon drums that help to provide humidity or they are going to be manually through weight. In other cases, they are physically provided through overhead watering systems through artificial hoses. However the case is, all of these are most often going to be artificially provided so the outside precipitation generally is not a factor. 
when you're looking at the soil types of what a greenhouse is dealing with, on many cases, most of these are going to be set on tabletops. So the soil systems can be artificially built as well, whether they're boxes, hydroponics, even aquaponics, the soil systems that a lot of these plants are built in are all artificially provided unless you're directly planting into the ground on which that greenhouse is built. When you're looking at the type of vegetation for plants, most often you're going to find that there are two main types of plants that are grown because greenhouses most similar are adapted towards forested or heavy rainforest environments, you're going to most often find tropical plants that can handle high moisture, high heat environments in which these greenhouses are. Another main plant source that is taken is going to be high cash crops, whether they are leafy greens, tomatoes, peppers, a lot of those high value cash crops that are grown year round in these greenhouses. But for the most part, greenhouses are going to be used for personal enjoyment by individuals or cash crops for commercial purposes. The individual animals within greenhouses are unique themselves as well. For the most part, there are going to be no native animals in these areas unless they happen to get through from the geography in which they are located. Most animals that you're going to find inside of a greenhouse are going to be insects whether they are grown there for predatory or pest insects like lacewing fly fungus gnats that thrive in these high moist environments or they're going to be predatory insects that are artificially introduced to help control those insects that are not wanted such as ladybugs Another animal that is often found in greenhouses is going to be fish that are utilized in aquaponics systems, which is a system that utilizes the fish poop to artificially provide nutrients for plants in a heavy water system that where the plants physically sit in a high water moisture environment and then instead of using the soil to collect the nutrients they get it out of the water system itself we'll talk more about this in a later video when we physically go to discuss aquaponics now why are these systems so important these systems weren't actually recognized as an official system until the early 1990s now that is one of the most important and unique things is that these regions are modular systems and so if you have a greenhouse that has or an area that has really poor soils such as the Negev desert of Israel or it is in a high densely populated area such as a warehouse the soil that has just been completely destroyed greenhouses help to provide areas that can become productive regions that were previously not productive or if you live in a particularly cold climate in which you want to control the areas most common in the northern european north american or the high asian mark areas that is too cold for a good portion of the year needing some supplemental heat whether it's a cold frame or provides year round now these are some of the main sides of importances to greenhouses is you are physically able to control everything within that area now the downside is though sometimes in these areas that provide greenhouses they have shorter daylight because they are in more northern hemispheres with lower sunlight so sometimes it is needed to be required to use artificial lighting that can require higher electricity as well the good side, the downside also to these though, is that even though it does extend your growing period, it does tend to have higher infrastructure costs to build this infrastructure. So it is a little bit more capital intensive up front. I would like to thank you for joining us this video as we took a closer look at greenhouse ecosystems and how they can be better utilized to helping and growing your plants. We hope to see you next time. 
And now, here's a word from our sponsors. This episode of Yule Acres is brought to you by Yule Acres Grapefruit Naturally Scented Lip Balm. For more information about this product, click on the link in the description below. 